The Behringer DR600 is a digital reverb pedal for the electric guitar. This is basically the cheapest available reverb pedal I could find available when I was looking for a new addition to my pedal board. In this video, we'll go over the controls of this pedal and listen to a few sound samples that we can get from it. That way you can decide for yourself if this is something you're interested in getting. Before continuing, make sure to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to be notified whenever our new videos are released. At the time of making this video, the Behringer DR600 reverb pedal had really piqued my interest. I picked this pedal up for just over $40, making it the cheapest reverb pedal available. At that price, it seemed like a good deal to test out, so let's see what this low budget pedal is capable of in this video. The Behringer DR600 reverb pedal has three controls for adjusting the amount and tone of the reverb, then one control that adjusts the type of the reverb. The first control is the level. Level doesn't affect our dry signal, which is the guitar sound without the reverb added. It just controls how much reverb is added on top of that. So we can just add a little bit of reverb to our signal or have a huge reverb sound. I do tend to find that the sound of it does get very washed out after about a third of the way up, and this is not really a reverb that I like to use too heavily. Then we have a tone knob, which can make it a darker reverb with the highs rolled off or a brighter reverb. Even when set to the brightest setting, it still seems to have a little bit of a dull sound to me, and we don't really have a lot of that high frequency fluttering sound that some other reverbs will provide. This is with a direct recording on the bridge pickup without the tone knob rolled off, so I didn't really expect it to be that dull. The time control adjusts how long the reverb sound goes on for, so we can have a really quick reverb sound that sounds as if it were in a fairly small room, all the way up to a large concert hall. The amount of reverb sound that we get will largely depend on this control along with the overall level control. Here's a clip testing out all the controls for level, tone, and time on this pedal. All the recordings for this pedal were done direct with the cleanest sound possible. I'm using a Gibson Les Paul Studio through a Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 and the Behringer DR600 reverb pedals in between, with the output in stereo mode going to the first two instrument inputs on my audio interface. The last knob is for a few different modes for the reverb. They are modulate, room, gate, hall, plate, and spring. These just kind of change the sound and type of reverb that we get. This control may seem continuous since it's a knob that can move smoothly between each mode, but it isn't. When I listen closely, I can hear the sound cut out and switch modes when the knob passes between them, so there is no in-between mode. Modulate almost sounds like a chorus to the reverb, all the way to spring, which gives us a wavy slapping sound of a spring reverb that some people may be familiar with, and this is a common type of reverb for some guitar amps to use. This spring reverb kind of has a little more of a hollowed out sound than some of the other reverbs. The plate reverb is a little smoother. 
All in room replicate the sound of larger and smaller rooms, with the rooms sounding like the reflections are a little closer together due to the smaller room size. The gate mode cuts off the reverb sound instead of continuously fading it out, as if it were run through a noise gate that cuts it off when it goes below a certain level. Here's each of these modes starting with modulate. Then we have room mode. Here is gate mode. This next sound is hall. Now we have plate. The last mode is spring mode. Let's talk about the construction of this pedal. The design is like all other Behringer pedals with a metallic finish on it and in this case it's a silver color. This pedal housing is completely made of plastic which can be a durability concern for some people and we can really see how it's constructed when we take it apart to access the battery compartment. To access the battery we need to use a pen to push in these hinges to get them out of the way, then pop the top off. This entire housing and mechanism for activating the pedals seems very flimsy so it's something you'll need to keep an eye on and be very careful with. It's not like some of the metal construction pedals where they're very durable so I do have some concerns about how this is designed. The knobs for all the controls are also plastic and since they're small and tightly spaced together they can be a little difficult to turn at times. To power the pedal we need either a 9 volt battery or a 9 volt adapter. The 9 volt battery is fairly difficult to access compared to some other pedals I've used, but most will likely use a power adapter either for the individual pedal or on a pedal board to avoid replacing the batteries all the time. Of note, I did have a dying 9 volt battery that I was testing with before recording this video, and when the battery level gets too low, I ran into some problems with the guitar signal clipping and it gives a really awful sound since it's a digital pedal. Keep that in mind if using batteries or just pick up a 9 volt power adapter instead. For connectivity, we have two inputs and two outputs for using it in stereo, but we can use it in mono as well as a single input and single output. Most people will likely use this reverb pedal in mono mode to connect it to a single amp, but you can use it in stereo mode if you're using more than one amp, a guitar effects processor, or direct recording. Now for my overall impressions. I do find this pedal has a very digital sound without a lot of warmth to it, even when I run it through some nicer sounding amps. Basically, I just find it kind of dull sounding, and it doesn't have much of a pleasant sound that I like, plus it can really make a mess of the guitar tone and muddy it up if you use it too much. With this pedal, it's probably best to keep it as a subtle reverb in the background, particularly if you're using an amp like mine that doesn't have a built-in reverb effect. For that role though, I do actually find it useful. The Marshall Class 5 tube amp has no built-in reverb effect at all, so this can really add more space and depth to the tone I can get out of the amp for really cheap, and it's not as bad as long as the reverb sound is not overpowering. 
The build quality could definitely be better, but that's one of the reasons this pedal is so inexpensive. This pedal has its place, and that would be for someone that's just playing around with their guitar in their bedroom. I wouldn't necessarily use this pedal for any sort of live performance or recording since I don't think the sound quality is good enough for that. Thanks for checking out this video on the Behringer DR600 Digital Reverb Pedal. If this video helped you out, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is released. You can also check the video description for a link to the Behringer DR600 so you can get one for yourself, and our social media links to stay up to date on all our new content.